So for this project, I started with a um, one foot tall vase that I had picked up at a garage sale some time ago, and I really thought that was the color of the glass all the way through it. So this vase did fool me. It's actually an old vase from Walmart because it says Walmart on the bottom, and it had a $2 price tag. Uh, who knows what I paid for it. But um, anyway, I am doing two projects with sailboats, and I'm using this for the sale of the sailboats. And um, in this particular project, I just need one sale, but I do cut up a few of them and show you how I do it just so that um, you can see. And I do have this kind of in fast motion, but it's um, you should be able to see it okay. And um, as we all know, glass can be unpredictable. And no matter how hard we try to nip it, and here I'm even drawing it out and trying to go around um, with the nippers, it doesn't always break the way that we want it to. And this certainly didn't. But look at it, made a perfect sale. <laughs> that worked out great. Anyway, I get a bunch of little sales out of this uh, this real pretty vase. And this, of course, cannot be tumbled, like I said. So I do take it out to the garage and sand it down to, to get the jagged edges off with the sander. Next I bring it in the house, wash it and dry it, and then I start going through my green glass. I thought the green would look real pretty for the bottom of the boats. It would go real pretty with the lime green stripe on the sail. And um, next I have this white I don't know what it is, a vase or something, and it had an edge on it that I wanted to get off of there before I started cutting this up into sails. And so on each of my sailboats, well, on this for project, I'm just having one sail, sailboat, but I have the striped sail and then a white sail to go next to it. And what I did was I got a strip of the glass and I kind of go back and forth, back and forth, creating triangles. And this I'm going to do a little bit slow right now just so that you can see how I did it. So I try to make an even um, strip of glass and then I just cut it on the edge going back and forth, back and forth, making triangles. And here I'll show you one more. So now you want to cut it inward like that to make another triangle. I'm trying to make pairs so the so the white sail goes with the striped sail, and um, oh that one didn't cut out that one didn't cut out very good, but I go ahead and I um, try to make it to a point at the top, and you can see I'm holding my nippers the wrong way because did you see that piece of glass fly sideways? When you hold it that way, it flies that way. If you hold it down like that, the glass will go down into the box. I'm just trying to hold it up so that you guys can see it. And then I take the, the green glass and the white glass and I throw it in a tumbler and tumble it for a couple of days. And along with that, I took some um, other glass that I've been wanting to tumble. I actually have a container out in the garage that I throw glass that's either been spray painted or painted with um, UV resin that I, do, I don't want to throw out. I'm not using it. The spray paint and the UV resin off of it and it'll turn back to clear glass and I can reuse it for something different. So I've thrown a bunch of glass in there including the white sails and of course the striped ones I cannot put in the tumbler because all the paint will come off of it. But um, So that's just how it is. I have to sand it down instead of tumbling it. I put water and grit in it and I tumble it for two days. I'm using my 9 inch mold and I'm cleaning it out with the painter's tape just getting any residue that might be left in the bottom and then I'm using some mold release it's called a Pell I picked it up on Amazon and I just sprayed it in the container and I found that this really helps and I don't have any problems with it sticking anymore so Next, I mix up my resin off camera and I pour this into the sand and then I mix it up. And you want it pretty thick because you don't want it running all over the, you know, your project. And I'm almost thinking that you might be better off pouring the sand into the resin because um, at first I almost thought I had too much resin in there. 
but I think it worked out all right. It's kind of hard to predict, but it's hard to get down to the very bottom of the cup. So if the resin was already in the bottom of the cup, it would be easier to mix it. I was kind of having a hard time mixing it. And then I dumped it into the bottom of the project and smoothed it out. Then I used some blue mica powder and mixed it in with the resin. And I only used a little bit of the mica powder because I still wanted it to be somewhat translucent. And I will link everything I've used in the video and the colors that I used and the type of mica powder and all that under the description. So I used my heat gun to get rid of the bubbles and then I let this set overnight. So the next day when it was fully cured, I came in with some painter's tape and put a straight line across it. I'm creating a horizon line and I want it to be perfectly straight. And then I took UV resin and a darker blue mica powder and I mixed the two together and I actually took a paintbrush and I painted this across. So not only am I creating the horizon line, but um, I'm making this UV resin opaque so that it covers up the top of the sand. I don't want the sand um, as high as it is. And I do this by doing several layers of it to make it totally opaque. Using the UV light to set it. Then I take a little bit of white mica powder and mix it in with some clear resin and just kind of paint it on the bottom to make a little bit of a, you know, the foam that you get up on the beach and then to create a few little waves out in the water. And then when that is dry, I pull the tape off. And unfortunately, a piece of tape stayed and I had to use a razor to cut it and pull it off. But it still worked out fine and it was a teeny bit jagged in one spot in the center and that's exactly where I'm going to put the sailboat. Next I tried to create some clouds up in the sky by using some uh, UV resin, some gray mica powder and some white mica powder. I'm not sure how great they turned out but they look okay I guess. And then next, I wanted to put a couple of birds up in the sky, so I took some white glass that I had, some of the glass you saw me nipping up earlier, and I nipped thin pieces of it with my nippers, and this created the wings of the birds. And you want to cut up quite a few so that you have a lot to choose from. You want the thin ones that get thinner at the end, and that when you stand them up on their sides, they can stand up alone without falling over and this is what they look like they really look pretty cute so next i put the birds on and i took some crushed glass the crushed reflective glass from michael's that they have up there all the time and just kind of put a few on each of the clouds and i mixed up some more resin about four ounces of resin off camera then I drizzled the resin over the glass, over the birds, and I spread it around all over the project. I put the sailboat on, and I put the resin over the sailboat. And then it was pretty much done. Then I used the heat gun, to, or the little kitchen torch, to get rid of the bubbles. And it was pretty much done. It has to sit on a flat level surface overnight. This particular resin has to be between 70 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. All resins are different. You need the, to read the directions for the resin that you are using. Hey everyone. So this is one of, oh, this is one of like three or maybe four sailboat projects that I'm doing. And I love the way this turned out. I think it looks really cute in the stand. Um, I love the way I was able to paint with the UV resin. I think that turned out real good. My only big mistake was <laughs> the uh, sand. So if you saw, if you watched the whole video, I mixed up the sand and set it there. And um, what happened was the doorbell rang and we were getting a furniture delivery and I um, ran outside and I was out there for like 15, 20 minutes and all of a sudden I thought, oh, I mixed up all this resin. So I ran back in and I quick plopped the, the sand into the thing, not even thinking about, you know, what each project was going to look like and I didn't even it out. 
So when I did the UV resin, I meant for it to be totally opaque and cover up the sand underneath, but there is a shadow from the sand, which kind of stinks, but that's the way it is. So next time I'll know better, but it really looks good from the back too. It looks kind of cute, you know, pretty, it doesn't look bad. So if you had it on display, you could see both sides. And um, I don't know, I thought it turned out cute. Now the top, when I look at it here, it looks like a pale blue, but when I'm looking at it in the, um, in the uh, camera, it looks kind of whitish, so I don't know if you can see the clouds that I made very well. But um, anyway, so on the Facebook page, one of the ladies had a problem with a round mold, but she was making the coasters in the coaster that resin actually stuck to the coaster. And another lady, um, Twyla, was talking about, you know, different ways to prevent it from sticking. Now I've had some mold stick, I've done the, um, the uh, letter molds and it stuck. And I've also done uh, one in this round mold and it stuck. And when I did the letter mold, I didn't look up ways that you could unstick it. <laughs> but I did when I did, um, had a problem with the round mold and it said to uh, submerge it in hot water, the mold, not the actual, you know, resin, but the mold up to where the resin was and um, I was able to get the, the resin out. It did stick a little bit on one of the sides, not on this particular one, on another project. There was a little bit of it on the side and it's a little, um, oh, some texture, it's not smooth on the side of the mold. So I started using that mold release spray and on the area that um, has the texture and I've not had anything stick to it again. But um, that's one good idea. And then Twyla was going over everything. She gave a lot of good um, suggestions, uh, most of which I've uh, pretty much been using, but um, one of them I haven't and I need to start. But um, <clears throat> so to prevent your molds from sticking uh, or having to use too much heat on it, because that's what um, we believe causes the sticking is to, um, you know, because you're trying to get rid of all those bubbles in there and is to prevent the bubbles to begin with by number one, stirring very slowly, which we all know to do. Um, and the other thing that I started doing recently, you'll see in my most recent videos, probably the last five, is let the resin sit for 10 or 15 minutes. If you have a long work time with your resin, like 40 minutes, which a lot of resins do, um, you can certainly let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, let the bubbles rise, and a lot of them will dissipate, um, you know, before you pour it. And then go ahead and pour the resin, and you can use heat on it. You have to be careful. You have to keep the um, torch moving real fast. You can't, you can't let it sit still at any spot, and you need to come back to it. You can't, after you're done, you can't just... Um, cover it and walk away. I usually come back every 10 minutes and look and um, sometimes more bubbles have um, rose to the top and you can pop them with a toothpick or you can hit it again real light with the heat gun um, around the edges. Sometimes the bubbles like to congregate <laughs> and you can knock those off of there. And the good thing when you come back about 10 minutes later, the other thing that I have noticed is that sediment will rise to the top too. And what I didn't see 10 minutes ago, I do see. And I usually come back 10 minutes and then 10 minutes again. And the other thing that Twyla was saying was to, um, and I see a lot of people do this with the little resin coasters, is hit it with the uh, alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, I, hit, I actually have a bottle that I put isopropyl alcohol in and I've never used it. I need to start using it. So that'll cut down. Well, actually, if you put the isopropyl alcohol on it, though, you cannot hit it with the torch because that's highly flammable. So that's, that's one thing to um, consider also about using it. So anyway, um, <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed the video. I've got some glass that I got at the garage sales this week. I've been going to garage sales, but in Florida, the thing is um, we have fewer garage sales in the summer, which sounds odd. 
and more in the winter, which is probably the exact opposite of up north, but it's so stinking hot here during the summer, no one wants to, you know, sit outside for the garage sales. So anyway, I did find some glass. Let me show you what I got. So, so these are the first two and I got this, all I could think of was Christmas. Look at how beautiful that green is. And it is green all the way through. This could be tumbled, anything you want to do with it. And this, I got that green one I got for only a dollar. This I did end up paying two dollars for, but this is the color all the way through it. It's not painted. And um, so this you could tumble, you could do um, anything you want with. The other ones I got was, I got this, I'm not sure what, I was thinking of when I got this, it was before I made the sailboats. So um, I was thinking of sails. This is, would be like a pottery sail. And po pottery you can tumble also. Um, you just have to, it's usually a shorter time or else all the paint comes off the outside. But I paid $1.50 for this great big bowl. And um, these were all a quarter. <laughs> she was getting rid of her grandmother's glass. My. So this is like a chip and dip set and it's green so i thought oh that would be good for you know leaves or stems and then this here, i thought this was so cool look at the texture on that glass the little bumps can you see it yeah can you guys give me some ideas what i could make with that i thought that was so cool and then this is that um uranium glass a quarter I, I have some out in the garage. I've never broken it up. I've seen some people do some cool things with it and um, then they put it under the fluorescent light and it you know, glows in the dark. And uh, this was another real cool one, I thought. Look at the texture on that, all the little bumpies. You guys gotta give me some ideas what I could make with that. I don't know, maybe that would be like a lizard, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then, let's see, what else did I get? Oh, I got this, this is crazy. Look at this huge hunk of glass, $1. She had three of them. One was clear, one was brown, and this was amber. I took the amber one. I probably should have got them all, but um, anyway, it's super, super heavy. And at the end, you can see it's like encased, cased glass, they call it, clear on the outside and the colored in the inside, but this will smash up great for, um, for uh, sea glass, faux sea glass. And then the prettiest one, I think, is this. This had a $10 price tag on it, and she said I could have it for five, but it's one of those fluted bowls like we talked about with the, um, with the uh, jellyfish. Um, so if you watch the jellyfish video, the fluted glass works really good, and you can cut it you know, up the sides and uh, and this, I don't know if you can see it, but those this color is all the way through it. And there are uh, gold stripes. Can you see that? There are gold stripes all the way through it. I thought that was so pretty. Anyway, <laughs> so. So anyway, like I said, I have some more sailboat projects coming up. I had a um, few cool ideas. One, uh, something that I messed up and I'm gonna try to fix it and I'll show you how I do it. <laughs> you can come along for the journey. Anyway, um, I hope you learned something new today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel. If you enjoy the channel, go ahead and subscribe and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching.